Hello, this is Michael Lee Richardson and this is Stay Home Storytime. Uh, today I'll be reading from my short story, The Other Team, which is featured in Proud Book, compiled by Juno Dawson. Uh, and the story was illustrated by David Roberts. Fantastic illustration. Uh, I'm only going to read a little bit of the story today because it's quite a long one. But just to give you some context, the story is about... Ethan, who is a young trans guy uh, who's on a football team called Mosaic, and it's about how the team support Ethan as their star player. Uh, so this is the other team. Anything from the trolley, Henny? Alistair lisps as he minces down the aisle of our beaten up bus. He's wearing the same tracksuit as the rest of us. Navy blue joggies and a navy blue jacket with the team's logo on one side and the logo for the cockpit, a local queer bar, on the other. I designed our logo, a football with each pentagon panel made from a different queer flag. The rainbow flag, the trans flag, the bisexual flag, purples and pinks and blues. Our team's called Mosaic, you see, so the logo's made up of different patterns and pieces, like a mosaic. Pretty clever. Well, I thought so. I like drawing and designing stuff. That's what I want to do when I go to college next year. My mum wants me to do something practical like plumbing or painting and decorating. My dad's not really speaking to me. Alistair's got his bright blue football shirt twisted up so it looks like a crop top. He's wearing a sequin scarf around his head, which he's been flicking off his shoulders like hair whenever someone says something he disagrees with, rolling his eyes and sucking his teeth. He sticks his ass out and shakes it, the skinny white boy equivalent to twerking. I feel Gregor bristle beside me. I know he's going red. Gregor hates it when people talk about sex or do anything sexy. He's not a big fan of Alistair. My eyes are up here, Gregor Sharp, Alistair says in a husky, sultry voice, catching Gregor staring at his bum. I mean, you can't not when someone's practically shaking it in your face, but still. I can almost feel Gregor burning. Alistair nods at me. And you, Ethan. I laugh and look at Gregor, and sure enough, his whole face and neck are bright red, almost as red as his hair. Shut up, he mumbles, pretending to check his phone. Alistair rolls his eyes and sucks his teeth again, flicking his scarf back off his shoulder, and goes back to twerking and flirting. Some of the other lads are laughing. Liam, our goalie, who's the size and shape of a wardrobe, all broad shoulders and David Diggs' hair, is filming Alistair for his Snapchat story and cracking up. Alistair, loving the attention, spins around in front of Liam. Liam scalps him on the arse and Alistair squeals. Eh, can you keep it down, please? At the front of the bus, Helen pulls an earbud out and turns around to face us. I can hardly hear my podcast. And Alistair wrote, please feel free to have a seat. I'm just going for a wee-wee, miss, says Alistair. He sachets off towards the toilet at the back of the bus, flicking his scarf back off his shoulders again. Helen tuts and shakes her head, but she's laughing. She sticks her earbud back in and goes back to her podcast. Helen's sort of a mix between our coach and our babysitter. She works at the college and student services, sorting people out with money or counselling, or helping them fill in their UCAS forms. She plays for Mosaic's adult team, Spectrum, and it was her idea to set up a team for younger queer people. Apparently a few years ago there'd been an incident with a couple of 16-year-olds joining the team and ending up at a fundraiser in the cockpit. Every time someone mentions it, the story gets more and more extreme, starting at underage drinking and ending up somewhere f around full-on carnage. The last time I heard it, there were police helicopters involved. We don't talk about that, says Helen, whenever it comes up. Not quite sure what accent Helen's got in this, just go with it. Helen's got purple hair and piercings, and she does her makeup like a pro. I used to be pretty intimidated by her, but now I know she's cool. She helped me figure out what I wanted to do at college, and went through some of the information on the different courses that were out there with me. And she's the kind of nerd who listens to podcasts. Helen's girlfriend, Mariam, is our driver today. She works for the bus company, so she gets us the bus for cheap. She's pretty quiet, but she laughs a lot, and she's always cracking up at Alistair. Mosaic have been playing together for nearly a year now. I joined six months ago, just after I finished my hires. I guess I'm taking a gap year. Coming out as a dude, bang in the middle of my hires was a bit of a kicker. My mum was alright about it. 
If anything, she was too accepting and wanted to have a heart to heart about sex and gender and specifically my sex life and gender every five minutes. It was pretty intense. Like I said, my dad's not really speaking to me. I ended up splitting up with my boyfriend too. He said he wasn't gay, which is fair enough. And he said I was weird, which isn't. Anyway, that was a lot. So I decided to take a year off before college. And then a couple of weeks in, I was bored shitless. Me and boredom are a bad combo. And I knew if I let myself mope for a whole year, I'd end up with a head full of mints. I was nervous about joining the team at first. I used to play on a girls' team when I was at school. We were pretty good and even made it to the finals in a couple of Scottish Women's League youth competitions. It hadn't really occurred to me that I would have to drop it after I came out. I guess I should have realised where it was going when the team captain pulled me aside one day and asked if we could talk. I didn't know what it would be like to play with guys and I didn't know where I'd fit on the team, but I needed to do something. I hadn't played since coming out. I'd put on a bit of weight and I was nervous about playing in a binder. But after my first night on the pitch, it felt like something had woken up inside me. My legs and butt were aching, but I felt at home in my body for the first time in a while. At my first social, some of the guys admitted that they didn't know how to talk to me at first. Slowly, I said, I'm a bit thick. Gregor was the only one who laughed. Don't take this the wrong way, said Liam, over a plate of sausage rolls. But I just worry about saying the wrong thing, you know what I mean? The socials for the under-18s team happen in the college student union, usually after a match. No booze. They can be awkward, sort of a cross between a kid's birthday party and a high school empty, when someone's mum and dad have gone on holiday and left them at home on their own for the first time. By which I mean, they're mostly about people copying off with each other. Sometimes someone sneaks some booze in and there are sausage rolls. Don't say the wrong thing then, said Alistair, knocking back a shot of vodka he'd sneaked in in an empty body spray bottle then all you have to worry about is those honking sausage rolls. Nah, that's not what I meant, said Liam, defensive. Just, has anyone ever said she by accident, you know? Loads of people. People on the bus, people in shops, my mum all the time. It's annoying, but if they're not doing it on purpose, what can you do? Go home and stare at myself in the mirror for like an hour and try to figure out what gave me away usually, but I didn't tell them that. Do you not get raging about it? asked Liam. No, I said. I lied. I don't know why anyone would call you she, said Alistair over the top of his body spray bottle. It was the first time I'd ever heard him say something that wasn't a comeback or a joke, and it was like his whole face had changed. You don't look like a she. You don't seem like a she. Gregor had been staring for a while. We'd never really spoken off the pitch. I've never met a trans guy before, he said. That you know of, I said. That I know of, yeah, he said. Anyway, nice to meet you. He put his hand out to shake mine and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. All the guys slagged him for being like an old man and that was more or less the end of that. Since that first social, it's actually been pretty good. The guys have always treated me like one of the lads and it's good to feel part of the team. There you go. Uh, and you can read the rest of that story uh, in Proud, compiled by Juno Dawson. Thanks.